Beer to Whiskey Studios high atop Barley's Tap Room on Washington Street in downtown Greenville, South Carolina. I'm Russ Heaps, and this is an episode of Beer to Whiskey. It's one of our Big John and Five uh, episodes, and in our ongoing quest to spread the gospel of good taste, what we do is we come and we get my good buddy here, Big John Richards, to uh, honorary PhD of, oh, of beer. Nice. And uh, we get him to pick a beer. Uh, in this case, this, we're doing something a little different. We got two beers here. And uh, we talk about the beer. He explains the beer. He talks a little bit about the brewery. Sometimes we actually get into uh, some brewing things, uh, information. And with all of that uh, being said, Big John, what do we have here? What are well, we doing? We got, we got two beers, so we're doing a Big John and five twice. Uh, <laughs> times two. Right. Just be prepared. <laughs> squared. Big John squared <laughs> is what this is. So we're comparing uh, and contrasting today, if you will. Um, we have a Founders Breakfast Stout, and we have a Founders Kentucky Breakfast Stout. So we can taste these two beers right next to each other, both this year's, well, this year's being the most recent release. And then, so the regular Breakfast Stout, of course, is uh, unaged Imperial Stout. They call it a uh, double chocolate coffee oatmeal stout. Which, That's a mouthful. Yeah, in more ways than one. <laughs> and it is, uh, it, it in fact is the subject of one of the best breakfasts I have ever had. <laughs> there you go. One of a, a co-subject, in fact. And then, uh, of course, Kentucky Breakfast Stout, they take that beer and they age it in uh, Kentucky bourbon barrels. So our quest today is to taste these two beers next to each other and talk about the difference between them, um, you know, tasting right, tasting right on top of each other. Okay. So what we expect is we're going to have the big uh, coffee, roasty, dark chocolate stuff going on in this guy, the big, more aggressive notes, and then this guy is going to have those rough edges knocked off. We're going to taste a little bit more of the wood. We're going to taste some vanilla, some molasses, some of those bourbony flavors. And, uh, I and like the, bourbon. Yeah, and a little richer, deeper mouthfeel with this guy versus a, a little more dry, um, a traditional stout okay. mouthfeel out of the first guy. Um, both big beers, both nine percenters. Uh, of course, barrel aging a beer doesn't significantly change its alcohol content. All it does is kind of mellow the beer and sort of change sure. some of the flavor profile. So. Uh, a misconception, though, sometimes people think that aging it makes it grow in alcohol content, which should not, as long as it doesn't re-ferment. <laughs> or unless you mean for it to re-ferment, which sometimes people do, but in this case, not so much. Okay. So uh, so we're going to taste these guys. Anything else that we need to talk about before we get into trying these I things? I don't, I no, because I don't want to wait. Yeah. I want to go ahead and... Yeah, yeah, it seems right. Let's start with, the, uh, with, start with the breakfast, regular breakfast stout. And I have to say that uh, this is one of my all-time favorite stouts. Uh, it, you can find it quite often. Uh, it's always good. Founders, pretty much anything that I've ever yeah. had from Founders has been good. Even stuff that, uh, styles of beer that I don't much care for, I like their better, theirs better than yep. others. And they, they have a great motto, beer brewed for us. <laughs> They like to talk about how they brew beer that they like and hope that you guys like it too. And, and as, as I will testify, we often do. And they, they just really do wonderful stuff up there. They just they knock it out of the park. Yeah. I am getting, when I, when I taste this, I am getting um, more chocolate than coffee. I've got a lot of bitter dark chocolate on the yeah, back. A it, lot of. Almost like cocoa, like you've yep. opened a cocoa powder. Yep. And. and Yep. Spread it on your tongue. Yep. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really sensational. Yeah, and you would expect that out of a big imperial stout. You would expect to get those big roast coffee flavors, espresso coffee, right? Dark chocolate, cocoa, bread crust. Some of these big dark, uh, you know, monster beer flavors, and most of the time in a monster beer alcohol package, which at nine percent, this will get your attention. Yeah, I think they, I think. They aptly named it, appropriately named it, uh, 
breakfast uh, stout. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. And of course, the uh, oatmeal, like I said, we're, we're talking double chocolate coffee oatmeal stout. Oatmeal is going to give it a little bit of that silky mouthfeel, that sugary, kind of creamy, sugary taste, too. So you're catching some of that. Um, some of that sweetness out of it too that helps balance some of that roast down right. because the first sip you take of this beer it tastes it, it, it's sugary sweet yep and then but it almost immediately drips back into those big roast flavors yep which makes for a great stout you know you want it to be a big warming satisfying filling beer and I'm sure I'm sure John gets tired of me talking about this uh, but he's the one that started it in one of his beer 101s but <laughs> The oatmeal is what lacing. is what really creates the lacing on this, and it's beautiful. Yeah, there's uh, several things that work into that. This is not a this is not a lightly hopped beer either. So there's some uh, American hops presence going on there. I don't have the IBU number right in front of me, and frankly, I think it's somewhat irrelevant. But but it's probably big. Those oh yeah, it's probably a big. It's big gonna number. be. It's probably a seventy or an eighty on yeah. the IBUs yeah. at at nine percent. Yep. And those hop oils will help hold that lace together too. So, but yeah, seeing seeing that much just cling to the top I of know. the glass. It's beautiful. Yeah, this is a great beer. All right, you ready to switch? Yes, please. So we should be switching. We should be catching a lot more molasses, vanilla. A lot more sweetness. We should have knocked off the big heavy edges off the roast. And we should be getting a much creamier beer out of this second one than we did out of the first one. Do we, do we know how long it actually ages in the barrel? I do not. It's, <laughs> it's not a question I've even thought to ask. Often it's m more, most often it's less than a year. So when you're talking bourbon, it's in product, it's in years of aging. But... You know, you put a beer like this into a barrel and it's probably completed its cycle in a matter of months. Right. Um, I find that when I talk to brewers, it's usually three or four months. Yeah. And it, you can, it just depends on what you're really trying to get out of it. Right. If you're trying to do a secondary fermentation, but it's only going to react with the wood for so long. Yep. And, and then you're just going to, then it's just going to be sitting there. Mm, Here's mm, to this mm, one. Mm. Oh. Yeah, there's a lot of molasses in this. I was just gonna say that. More yeah, than those, more than I more than I remember it. I wonder having. how fresh this KBS is. I don't I really don't remember when KBS releases. I feel like it was recently. Of course, by the time this video comes out, it could be <laughs> could be at any yeah. point. Wow, that is good. That is so good. That's great. And you see, with mine, I can see a definite difference in the lacing between the two. Yours looks like it's the opposite. Well, I'm I'm course, a little yeah. more. It's a little more sophisticated over here. Right. Yeah. Know. That seems right. Now we don't have it in front of us, but I just think it's worth mentioning there's also a Canadian breakfast stout right which is a aged in maple whiskey barrels Ma maple syrup barrels no whiskey at all yeah and man does that that is do some wonderful stuff yeah and I'm not a maple flavor fan but real maple syrup and aging something like that it, it's taking a, this and creating those it's extraordinary yeah it's it extraordinary. really is that's the one of the very small handful of beers I consider a white whale that actually turned out to be as good as advertised. Right. And if you, if you look for it, if you have that in your mind and you look for it and you go to a place like Barley's that has uh, an interest in big beers and good beers, uh, you will eventually find it. They'll, they'll, they'll be pouring it at some point. But uh, it's worth looking for, and when you find it, it's worth at least a 10 ounce glass of it. Oh yeah, any one of these beers, if you find Canadian breakfast out, you're, you're doing great for yourself. Because they're, they're brewing five times as much of it as they ever have in the last couple of years. Yep. And it's still gone a month after they yep. release it. It is spectacular. And if you have a total wine uh, in, your, in your town or in your neighborhood, 
they usually, whenever it does release, they'll usually have it in bottles. Well, any, any of your big bottle shops that specialize in beer, yeah. um, we got Total Wine all around the southeast, up in the middle, mid-Atlantic. A lot of folks, um, you know, if you were up in the Midwest, say, probably have something different uh, as far as wholesale shops like that go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any of those, any of your beer bottle shops are going to try their hardest to get something like that. So that's where you develop a relationship with your proprietor and say, hey, you know what? I shop here three times a, a month and, yep. you know, I you know, spend a bunch of money in your establishment. Why don't you let me know when the Canadian breakfast stock comes yep. out? And those, those folks are happy to do that. <laughs> so I'm actually getting a little more on the... After after this sits a minute, I'm getting a little more coffee out of it. I agree with you. I'm tasting a lot of like espresso roast, Italian roast coffee. Mm -hmm. Once it's once it's just sitting and not, I'm not sipping. Yeah. Because you get the a lot of the sweetness right up front, more so even than this guy did. Yep. I know we've we've done founders before, but just a little something about the brewery. Uh, Michigan Brewery. They're 25 years old. Um, they are one of the breweries that had a little, that got a little steak bought out of them by, um, hmm, Constellation maybe? Okay. Um, it's a small steak and uh, the last I heard it was like a 30 percenter or something. But these guys, uh, any, any good brewery of any size is going to welcome, you know, an investor. Yes. Which essentially is what this has happened. And so Founders is uh, still their locally owned Michigan brewery, but, you know, they we start hearing these, oh, they're owned by blank or so-and-so, the money's going to South America or yeah. the mob or yada, yada, yada. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, good beer is good beer. Yeah. And when we, and we talk about this from time to time, but, you know, if you look at, the rest of the world, the best beers in in the in the rest of the world, by and large, are the beers that are owned by the big brewing conglomerates, and whether that's because they, you know, buy out the little guys or force out the little guys, I don't, hard to say. Yeah, that's kind of the model that is happening in the United States right now too, where, you know, the the Anheuser Busch is buying up the little breweries left and right just snapping them up and bringing them into the fold. But mercifully, they're leaving them alone to go brew good beer and say, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Keep, t you know, yep. use our buying power, but keep brewing great beer and keep taking over your market like you always have been. And maybe that's the model we got. Whatever it is, you know, whoever's brewing the great beer, continue to support those guys. I'm, I'm there 100%. I I. I'm still a big fan of Ballast Point. Yep, absolutely. You know, notwithstanding the fact that they're now they were gobbled up by a big yep. guy, and uh, so. and they've they've gotten hurt by being bought by Constellation Brands, which is a shame because they're still brewing really really good beer. Yeah, and we look at it, of course, in the southeast where we're from, Sweetwater and Terrapin, you know, are still doing pretty well for themselves, but they've been bought up by the big guys, and so they're getting some of that kickback. Wicked Weed, you know, same deal. Yep. But there's still all of those guys brewing really solid beer. Yep. Yep. So here's the world. And with that let's, said. Let's drink in it. <laughs> go get a beer. Yeah. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers.